Welcome back to the Chat Cave here on TV, youtube.com slash TV. Follow me on Twitter at TV. I am joined once again in the Chat Cave by Max from Three Geeks. What's going on? Happy holidays to you, Max. As well, sir. Um, I went solo on the last episode. I hope you're not too mad. Uh, you know, hey, you know, I understand. Uh, you know, Batman flies solo every now and again. So, so too does uh, does Mike have to fly solo in the chat cave? I do not take offense. Yeah, I just feel like we haven't talked in a long while. <laughs> it has been a solid minute. What's going on in Three Geeks Land right now? Uh, right now we're kind of kind of just cruise on cruise control. Like, there's not a lot of stuff going on, and. Uh, there's not a lot of, um, you know, like there's no conventions right now, and then you know we're just kind of doing our weekly thing and and then cruising right along, so nothing crazy, just uh, you know business as usual. Cool, cool. Uh, you can check out more at threegeeks.ninja uh, or on iTunes or you do the Stitcher, right? Stitcher. We're on Spotify, Podomatic. All right, cool. And you've been, you guys have been cranking out a lot of like. Written reviews too at three geeks dot ninja. Oh yeah, that's all. That's all, Jason and Dan. I uh, I loathe it, but um, <laughs> no, they, those guys are awesome. They they they're cranking them out. So check out more of them and their efforts over at Three Geeks for tonight. Since we are in December and the holiday season is in full swing, basically, I decided what could be a better holiday themed Batman property to talk about with Max other than Batman Returns. This movie. <laughs> I hadn't realized how long it's been since I've watched this movie until you brought it up. Well, we'll get into our current impressions, but I'm very curious what your thoughts were way back in the nineties when we were hot off eighty nine Batman from Burton and Returns was I think that was in ninety two. Now back then, the eighty nine Batman, that was so good, like you know, iconic, stuck in my head forever. Like that's it's just one of the, the best Batman movies, even though I mean it's not actually that great. <laughs> but uh, this one, they've got they've gotta do it bigger, they've gotta do it better. Uh, this is the first like super villain team up. Mm-hmm. So there was like we've got the penguin, we've got Catwoman, Christopher got- Walken. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's like when I when I I remember watching this movie and I, I thinking it was too much. Like even as a kid, <laughs> right? I was like, it was good, not as good as the first one because there's just so much. It's because Burton had a lot more creative control the second time around than what he had on the first film. He had a fair amount on '89 Batman because. Hello, Michael Keaton as Batman. That was kind of a big, what the hell are you doing yeah. at the time? Little did we know how awesome it would turn out. But that aspect of it, a lot of the design work, it, it was kind of reined in on that first Batman. And then once that became a big hit, I feel the studio was just like, do whatever you want, man. And he was like, okay, let me lay out my black notebook of weird drawings and see what I got. <laughs> Yeah, this one's much darker than than the first one. You can definitely tell they yeah they just let Burton do his whole deal on this one. Just the uh, orphan babies in the sewers and <laughs> <laughs> penguins <laughs> being raised by penguins. I guess the penguin is like a very familial bird. You like you know they they family's important to a penguin, but uh, that yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's darker. I mean, visually, it feels way darker than the first film even. And though there are some shots that look like they're taking place in daylight, that's kind of hard to gauge, honestly, because at no point, now that I watch the movie as an adult, at no point do I believe that this is actually like on location in a city. This is all just, it feels like a stage show at times. Yeah, it's 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 got the uh, studio look. Or they, they were in a soundstage. Yeah, you can, you can definitely tell 
There's only like four right turns to make in Gotham. <laughs> Everyone just keeps rotating around the same central square. And, and there's always like only 15 to 20 people around. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> the exact same people who were terrorized by the Red Triangle Circus Gang the day before at re-ele- or elect Mayor Cobblepot rally. <laughs> they spend a lot of time outside. <laughs> That's also part of the charm that works for this movie still to some degree. I do like the the design work. Like Tim Burton, he's got an eye for visually captivating design. Sometimes he goes a little overboard, but he can't knock the guy for not trying. <laughs> uh, I think there's a lot of iconic looks in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like that scene where uh, they're pulling out of Catwoman's apartment and it says hell here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, I like a lot of that stuff. From the visual uh, standpoint, it's very, very much Burton. And you might say it's a little bit in overdrive, like giant statues, art deco all over the place, which Batman, the animated series, took lifts from, certainly. I think that was a time the animated series was coming out, too. Uh, yep, yep, a little bit right around then. They're going for that gothic modern I think he pulled it off a lot better in the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> well, it made sense because that was a cartoon. Whereas here, Danny DeVito in his little <laughs> sleepers. <laughs> oh, man. Suit. I don't know. In his bloomers. Yeah, his bloomers. <laughs> like, part of me is just really all over the place with what I want to talk about first because there's so much to unpack. It's the visual <laughs> style. It's the really morbid outlook that this whole movie has it's the villains and what the actors are doing as the villains what keaton's doing as batman let's let's talk about that i all right what what keaton's doing as batman they don't really get a lot out of him you know like i don't know like bruce wayne or batman just doesn't have a lot going on this is definitely more about the villains and their interactions Yeah, you get a sense that Burton's kind of like, Batman's kind of in the way of the story I really want to tell. Right. Didn't Keaton come back for like a huge increase in salary? Oh, dude, yeah, no, they had had to pay him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The first one worked so well, now it's like, okay, we can let Burton loose and and Keaton's got to get his check. And he got top billing this time, too, because Jack's gone, but... (laughs) I always got the sense, even when I was younger, I'm kind of like, man, Batman really isn't in this all that much. He doesn't have much to do here other than show up, react to what the villains have planned, and then find some deus ex machina to deal with it. Well, there's also the wooing of the Catwoman. That was uh, certainly some wooing and (laughs) some stuff that went right over my head in 92, but now I'm just like, oh... Oh, wow. <laughs> like, one of these people is a switch, I'm guessing. Uh, um, I was I was actually surprised at Danny DeVito in this one. And like you're saying, like how they just let him get, a, get away with a bunch. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's really a gross person. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it has nothing really to do with the fact that he's a mutant bird man. He's just really crass. Like, the mutant bird man mm. is just the icing on top of that. Right, like he would, just, like no one would hang out with this dude anyway. <laughs> he just happens to be a disgusting penguin monster. Well, yeah, I mean the whole purpose of the story is that Christopher Walken has to pay people to hang out with him or to get him to be popular because it yeah, suits. Uh, Even Christopher Walken doesn't want to be hanging out with him. But it's like it's weird too because he's like he's just like straight eating that raw fish. Like, can you do that as a person? Is that <laughs> well? <laughs> Once mutants- you get sick. Mutant Birdman, dude. He has a different yeah. tolerance. And he was raised in the sewer with sewer penguins. <laughs> sewer penguins. So immediately, any kind of logic balloon you're trying to pop here, nah. It's done <laughs> in by sewer penguins. Uh, the penguin man of the sewers is true. First of all, let's just say how much negligence is at play in the, I don't know, in the local government of Gotham that... They abandon the zoo and don't bother to, I don't know, rehabilitate the animals somewhere else. Uh, nah, that's fine. <laughs> we, we, we kept enough food in there 
till Friday, so they'll they'll be fine. That always that always did bother me, honestly. I'm like, did no one care about these penguins when the zoo shut no. down? <laughs> like all the other animals they're are ha- gone or dead, I'm guessing. But these penguins, man, they endure. No, dude, they're the they're the Madagascar penguins. Dude, they <laughs> broke out. But yeah, Danny DeVito being a disgusting person. Like, yeah, he's gross in this. He's saying like stuff he wants to do to Catwoman. He's hitting on like interns. Like in this modern day context, he's politician material for sure. Yeah, I mean that's true. Like he is just every like senator <laughs> right now. But uh you know like there's this public outrage over like the misogyny and the the obvious like sexism. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean Here's the one thing I'll play devil's advocate on. It's like he's a villain, so you're not supposed to like him. <laughs> but oh, oh yeah, <laughs> like but that's that's the traits that they give you. Know, like the 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 villain is like, hey, look, he like, makes crude comments, and he's like pawing at this chick's boob, and then talking about <laughs> wear a butt. <laughs> like, that scene still <laughs> bothers me. That scene and the scene where he's like grunting and growling at the. The lady who used to be on Saturday Night Live. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, he's like, man, I'd like to, I'd like to get with her. Yeah, <laughs> teach her yeah. my. After he got done biting that <laughs> dude's nose. <his> nose. <laughs> and yeah, and yet it's like, oh yeah, he's election material. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like the the coming out party. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> debuting your candidate for the team, and he just starts <laughs> off on the wrong flipper like that. Teach her my French <laughs> flipper trick. <laughs> it's so Just gnawing gnarly. on that nasty fish. It's gnarly, man. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> you got to give Devito props. Like he leans into that pretty hard. Oh no, he sold it. Uh, this penguin was the most gross version of the penguin that I, that I've ever seen. Like in all of his mannerisms, in the way that he talks, and uh, Danny Devito was the absolute perfect choice for this. <laughs> It's kind of a give and take, too, because part of me, after the fact, when the sheen of this movie (laughs) quickly left, part of me was thinking, like, I wonder what DeVito would do with a true-to-source material penguin. Like, he's just a gangster or a gun runner, but he's trying to play up this sophisticated gentleman about town. I think he could absolutely pull it off. Um, because you know, like this is this is like just Burton esque and over the top. But uh, I feel like, yeah, if there's like you know your your scum is playing up to high society, I think Danny DeVito could pull that off easy. He's still around. He's still kicking, so he could probably play that in whoever's gonna play Batman next. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's ranging from Oscar Isaac to back to Army Hammer at this point. So. I mean, I don't know, Army Hammer. He was about to be our Batman for that George Miller Justice League, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he's got enough acting chops that I just want better writing. I don't know. Um, That Henry Cavill guy doesn't have anything going for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> that he would was... be great if he got to play Batman. <laughs> In the same universe. That would be so good. Yeah, because he's then done with Superman, mustache. right? Yeah. He gets to keep the mustache this time. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like Bruce Wayne walks the mustache. It's sad that instinctively oh when I saw him in Mission Impossible, because I recently just finally watched Fallout, the first thing I thought was like, man, Cavill should get his own franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and I, could, I immediately forgot that he had headlined a franchise <laughs> before this. Yep. Catwoman. Oh, my goodness. This is the most interesting Catwoman origin also. Defi- define interesting. <laughs> well, you, you don't really know what's going on at all. Mm-hmm. Like, why she ends up with these, like, cat powers. Does um, she really have cat so powers, pushed, though? Well, because, I mean, like, she's got the nine lives thing. I thought that was just something she was doing to sound cute. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, like, she, she did end up in situations that would kill a normal person. And, and then she just pops right back up. Oh, well, that's so, because her stunt woman did the stunt and, and Michelle <laughs> Pfeiffer would show up perfectly fine. Oh, no, I get what you mean. It starts off. She gets pushed out a window and then is revived by cats. 
and like it doesn't make sense to me because like the one cat is like eating her. Yeah, <laughs> it's like gnawing on her finger and stuff. Yeah, but I mean maybe that's what shocks her out of state, as it were, because they did show several awnings break her fall gradually. There's no way she would be walking, but she could survive. Okay, I don't know. That's fair, but uh, yeah, she her like her bones would be shattered. <laughs> And then she would have died, you know, just from exposure laying out there. <laughs> I do like Michelle Pfeiffer in the role. And again, it's a matter of like, what would she do with a true to source material Catwoman? Because this Catwoman is very off model from what comics people were accustomed to. She's way more of an anarchist than Selena is in the comics. Yeah, and a lot less of a thief. Yeah, I don't think she stole anything. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she broke in. She broke in, that's for sure. But then she immediately vandalizes the place. I mean, the classic meow scene. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, she, she doesn't really have any points. She just wants to do damage. Yeah, and she's really, really quick to hold a grudge. Now, Max Shrek, I totally get why she w wants to do that guy in. Because he pushed her out a window. And insulted her coffee making abilities or something, but no, he complimented her coffee making. That's right, abilities, but uh, was insulting every other aspect of her life. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and once you've been thrown out a window, certainly those instances will become way more uh, vital. She immediately like transfers all of this aggression to Batman. Yeah, I mean, like he did kind of let her fall off a roof or something yeah but, but she uh, stabbed him i don't yeah yeah no, no it's definitely not deserving of the same aggression <laughs> or the heightened aggression that she <laughs> that she gives batman especially like you mentioned before that she's got a little something going on with him at least that she is drawn to him and while catwoman the comics certainly plays mind games with batman it never i don't feel it ever really gets to that level of intensity with regards to violent interactions yeah you know it, in the comic books it's more of a playful flirting cat and mouse sort of deal um in in this it's like she's a child who doesn't understand her feelings so she's just gonna like keep keep pulling bruce wayne's hair until he likes her that's actually a good kind <laughs> of batman interesting, yeah it's an interesting way to look at it because you know if after she's gone through that trauma and kind of been reborn as Catwoman, quote unquote, makes sense that kind of her way of perceiving everyone around her would go right back to that square one mentality a little bit. Even though she's pretty much on top of everything, she knows exactly <laughs> how to hit Max Shrek, knows how to play up to Penguin. Yeah, it, it, it's weird. And and again, you like, you'll flip into this like childish, like anarchist, you know, like destroy everything, you know, whatever. But then other times she's plotting, you know, and she wants to be the you know like the reason the Batman goes down. Mm -hmm. She wants to do these specific things, and yeah. and it takes a lot of you know intelligence. But yeah, then her character kind of goes off and spray paints a department store. <laughs> yeah, which apparently she had a blast doing that. So I'm glad she had fun at least as an actress. I like, mean, who doesn't want to chew the scenery? Yeah. In fact, uh, that's probably why Keaton looks miserable throughout most of the movie is because everyone else gets to have so much fun playing big and he has to just be like, Ugh. there's there's no get nuts. No. Yeah. He was denied his get nuts scene this time around. <laughs> that's true. What do we get instead of get nuts? We got, uh, oh, we got him tearing off his mask like ricotta cheese. <laughs> yeah. The easiest. Uh, we also got a little bit of uh, DJ Bat Dizzle. Yeah, that was him. Him and Alfred turning around penguins, <laughs> dubbing over Oswald. Yeah, I mean, there's a few Bruce Wayne scenes. There are those. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you get to see Bruce Wayne with Max Shrek. That was like a decent scene where he had, like, dialogue. Yeah. He had dialogue and he delivered it convincingly. And. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, I mean,. They established the relationship pretty quick that these two don't like each other, even though they barely have screen time together as Shrek and Bruce Wayne in the same room, like 
twice, I think. Yeah, there's there's two. Once at a meeting, and then once at the ball, right where he's wearing the big the big uh, what do you call that Sultan hat or whatever. Yes. Yawn. <laughs> can we talk about Christopher Walken now? <laughs> yes, I mean, we kind of sitting can, on this. but. But uh, you can't talk about Christopher Walken without first talking about Christopher Walken's hair. <laughs> you think that was part of the whole deal? He's like, all right, Tim, I'll do your movie, but I want a giant wig. <laughs> like, that's got to be his call, right? My hair has got to be so big. So talking about people having fun, he's having fun just being him at that point. Yeah, they kind of just sort of walking ha. up and down the, the set on that one. I see what you did there. Badoom ching. <laughs> yeah, oh man. The real hero of the movie, in Burton's eyes, I feel, is Max Shrek. Because that's the thing, it's like he's barely interested in what Batman does. Catwoman and Penguin kind of hold his attention for the most part. But whenever he gets to do a Max Shrek scene. I think you can tell that's when Burton cares the most. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because the, the, movie, the movie is really about Max Shrek. Mm -hmm. And then everything else kind of goes on around yeah. Max Shrek. Like, the Penguin works works his way into the story because he's in orbit of Max Shrek. Uh, Selena Kyle, her whole arc has to do with vengeance on him. They try to work Bruce yep. Wayne into it at the very end, but... Sure. Well, no, no, I mean, because, like, uh, yeah, Bruce Wayne is going up against him for the power plant. Which does what again? <laughs> it sucks up the power. Sucks up the power, yeah. And he's trying to veto him down on it, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, why do we we have an energy surplus? Yeah. Why would we need a nuclear power plant? Because, like all shopping mall moguls, they have a nuclear power plant <laughs> at their disposal. <laughs> yes. That... That is a persistent thing, is what exactly is this guy's empire? <laughs> From what I can tell, he has one retail store in this one city, maybe. I don't know. Right. So he's got, like, the Macy's. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing just he's a retail mogul. Maybe with some, uh, what do you call it, property. And some real friend, estate. Yeah, some real estate and some friends in big nuclear so, yep, yep, that makes and sense. And he's trying to break in. So the whole mayor thing—that's because he wants a mayor who will okay the power plant, yeah. ultimately. Which that is, is the the goal. But then, you know, a couple nose bitings later, <laughs> here we are, and egregious assaults on staff and eating of raw fish. If you want to get technical, yeah, sure. <laughs> Which begs the question, why doesn't Max Shrek just run for mayor in the, in the long run? Right? <laughs> Wouldn't that have done so much better? Well, because the, the town loves him, apparently. Yeah. Like, he's more popular he's than the, the mayor. Yeah, he's giving out gifts on Christmas. <laughs> I guess because all of his backdoor dealings would have been brought to light somehow, maybe by Batman or whatever. The Penguin had the dirt on him because like, he killed his old partner. Oh, yeah, that's right. And all the shredded documents. Yeah, those those shredded documents, which, I don't know, they're pretty hastily glued together. <laughs> you could easily dis discount those. <laughs> ah, well, you know, this is the 80s. <laughs> or oh, early 90s. Early 90s, yeah. My favorite part, though, is the whole... But regardless. I'm, remember me? I'm Fred's hand. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess, yeah, there were would be some skeletons that would come out of the closet for Shrek. But even then, like, Penguin himself is taking a huge gamble that this guy would help him. Because ultimately, Penguin's goal, now that I think about the plot of this movie as a rational adult, part of me is, like, what was his endgame? Was his endgame killing the Firstborns all the time, the whole time? That was his whole thing? Yes. That was. Okay. Yeah, because that's why he went to the records room and he was writing down all the names. Okay, so his whole modus operandi was essentially uh, infanticide because yes. he was raised by penguins. Well, not because he was raised by penguins. 
<laughs> but because he was abandoned to be raised by penguins. Abandoned by Pee Wee Herman <laughs> to be raised by <laughs> penguins. Okay, yeah, that will mess you up, Royal. <laughs> <laughs> when you find out when you find out it's Pee Wee Herman that didn't want you, you're like, you, you freak, I was too much of a freak for you. <laughs> I got a segue really quick because I know you love talking about this, but you know, he Paul Rubens came back as Oswald Cobblepot's dad for Gotham. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Doesn't that just make your day? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, who knows? Terrible. He's, he, he's a good actor, and the guy playing Penguin on that show is a good actor from what I've seen. Maybe they had really good chemistry. I don't know. I wasn't yeah, no, curious I got, enough to watch. I got no hate for Paul Rubens, but uh, Gotham is so bad. <laughs> well, I mean, Gotham kind of takes a page out of this movie's book with regards to go big or go home. <laughs> I mean, you got to give it that. They do go big, just yeah, big in terms of misfires. I still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, his goal was always to kill firstborns, collecting the records, because he was abandoned by Paul Rubens. Right. Okay, that's still a long way to go with an unknown factor like Max Shrek, so it's very convenient. Well, I mean, like, it, I feel like all he really needed from Shrek was the, the time in the, in, the, in the records room. Yeah. So he always had what he wanted from Shrek. And then Shrek was like... Max, yeah, talks him into being mayor. So really, that subplot didn't need to be there. <laughs> no. He could have oh, just become the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> it would have played out exactly the same. Yeah, ultimately, that would have been a way more interesting plot, I think, is Batman unraveling the conspiracy between the two of them. Oswald Cobblepot wants access to the records room. Sure. Max Shrek has the heft and public goodwill to endear him to the city therefore granting him access to the records room. And then all Penguin has to do is not, you know, reveal that evidence he has against Shrek. Shrek can run for mayor. Penguin can go and then, do whatever he does. Yeah, it's like, you know, if you need Penguin to interact, it's like, oh, hey, do this for me or else I'll blackmail, you know. Yeah. You know, I got it. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's, it's just like there's no reason for the Penguin to become mayor at all. Until he achieves his goal, he puts Penguin on retainer, him and the Red Triangle Circus Gang, which honestly is kind of a cool foil for this Penguin. I like the idea of the Red Triangle Circus Gang. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, they were they were cool. They were good henchmen. But yeah, you like they could be henchmen. They could be doing like political sabotage or what espionage, what have you. And yeah. Batman's like, huh? Why are these clowns so interested in offing mayoral candidates? Are we are we writing a better Batman Returns? I I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh no, it's just it's just funny that uh you know, like they got there. Yeah, and then Penguins for mayor, even though he's just the most disgusting person you've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> sure. It is Gotham though, so it is only like twenty people with very limited yeah. <laughs> with apparently a very limited understanding of what goes on be out, uh, outside the county limits. Oh uh, dude, everyone's outside the, the freaking city hall. <laughs> Making America great again. <laughs> I do like there is that scene where Bruce and Selena meet up in the only town square in the city. They already have like news articles about Catwoman beating Batman. Where did anyone know about Catwoman beforehand? No. And, and also like how, how did you who got the story? Who broke the story? Vicky Vale. Oh, OK. There we go. Yeah. She's my jealous ex-girlfriend. Yeah, she was there the whole time. She's just stuck in the office. <laughs> Bruce is like, yeah, it didn't work out between me and Vicky. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's like, I'm going to be late for dinner. I'm working the deadline. <laughs> Bruce is an asshole. <laughs> just trying to get that side piece. I will say, because uh, I know we come back to this a lot and it's kind of great, but I will say Alfred is on his best behavior this time around. <laughs> he doesn't get the opportunity to do anything. <laughs> The one time he had to show her down in the bat cave, she broke out. 
she just took off and he's like, I was going to show you the back <laughs> If you just wait a minute. Everyone's in such a rush. Do you think that was really what he was going to do when Bruce has oh, to run yeah, off? Absolutely. And <laughs> Selena's like, I have to make an excuse to you. Alfred's like, I'm going to show her downstairs. <laughs> Master <laughs> Bruce needs some companionship. <laughs> Aside from me. Yes, absolutely. Dude, if Alfred is in a room with a female of an age to be a mate with Bruce Wayne <laughs> alone, then he will take her to the Batcave. His, his mind is already made up. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's like standard operating procedure. I like see. This is why we need to rewrite these ba- these Batman movies because now we're telling a different story about an elderly butler slowly losing his mind and trying to you undermine know? his boss's operation. <laughs> he just wants him to have someone to love. Yeah, is that so hard to ask? <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. He does do a couple of things. I'm gonna give it. He. He helps confuse penguins, and uh, he, right. and he gives he gives uh, Bruce what's the name of that dish? Vichyssoise, or something. it's supposed oh, to be. Cold. I don't even remember. <laughs> he gives him like really cold soup that one time. Oh, um, the uh, gazpacho. Is it gazpacho? No, I thought it was a. Uh, it was some kind of weird sounding dish, but. It's like oh, okay. yeah. Michael Keaton's like, it's cold. He's like, it's <laughs> vichyssoise, sir. It's supposed to be cold. <laughs> I'm like, clever? Alfred, heat up the soup. <laughs> 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 then he would have at least had the third thing to do. <laughs> oh my God. Well, no. Okay. He, he is decorating the manor for Christmas. I will say that. Right. Which, by the way, is a ninety-five-year-old dude <laughs> doddering around on ladders and things. When was this released? Was this a summer release, or was, was this release this a summer release? I think it was. Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of off-topic, but I feel it ties into us. What is with superhero movies releasing their Christmas-related films in the summer? Still, Iron Man three did that. Uh, Spider Man was uh, close to Thanksgiving. <laughs> maybe so they can bring it back. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Like it'll have its good run and it's like, oh, it's Christmas time. This movie was set during Christmas time. Like what they're doing with Deadpool Watch right now. Movie again. I'm actually kind of excited for that. I've got movie pass, so <laughs> you might as well. Know, it won't be the Christmas aspect aspect of this uh, film because it is the holidays. I don't know. Do you think he was too heavy handed with the Christmas angle, Burton or not? No, I feel like in in four right turns in Gotham. This is enough Christmas stuff, you know, like this is in in the play Gotham that they've given us here. (laughs) (laughs) Christmas is a big deal. I guess it makes sense for a couple of different motifs. Batman would be the most lonely on Christmas, probably. Yeah. Uh, Max Shrek. It's the busiest time of the year for him. I'm sure it's it's got like a Scroogean aspect to him, you know? Except if Scrooge didn't learn anything and got electrocuted at the end. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So a much better version of Christmas Carol. <laughs> Where you don't learn yep. any life lessons and you just die. And Tiny Tim ro- ro- runs around in a bat suit. No, no. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim runs around in his little penguin onesie. <laughs> <laughs> God bless us, everyone. I don't know why he sounds like <laughs> I don't know why he sounds like Gilbert Godfrey, but <laughs> oh my goodness, that's great. Okay, now that was a missed opportunity. Gilbert Godfrey as the Penguin. Ooh, that could still work too. I don't know. That that'd be a lot for two hours, though. Oh man, no, I I want the Gilbert Godfrey the uh, audiobook <laughs> Fifty Shades Gray. <laughs> I want the Gilbert Godfrey Penguin. <laughs> Okay, well, in a fair world, (laughs) we won't have any of those, but (laughs) I guess if that's your Christmas wish. um, Yep, my one Christmas wish. Gilbert Gottfried erotic audiobook, and please give him the penguin. (laughs) It's the year of the (laughs) Gottfried. Oh, my goodness. Which, speaking of comedy, 
this movie is kind of hilarious in several other ways, <laughs> maybe not as apparent yes. than what we've been making fun of. Like, Batman straight up murdering people <laughs> again. Yeah, I'm going to uh, light this dude on fire with my car. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm going to escape the police. And huh. I, mean, I guess he didn't kill, like, he didn't cause them to drive into that alley. Yeah, he wasn't but in control. At least two of those cops are dead. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, let's talk about maybe how easy it is to hack the Batmobile. No, no. What gets me is that if you look, those people had the Batmobile like two thirds of the way taken apart <laughs> just to affix something on the bottom of it. They should have just left it on like cinder blocks. Pull of Jason Todd. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> no, I mean, I was like, man, it takes so much to just to fix this remote transponder thing. Like, you got to take the whole Batmobile apart. Well, I mean, it's easy when you got the blueprints to the car. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we're going to turn it into like, an H-bomb on wheels. And they got, like, the, bo- the full schematic on display. I'm like, right. where'd they get that? <laughs> right. <laughs> See, at least, at least with Nolan, like, when that possible plot contrivance came up, where the guy's like, look what I found. Blueprints to the, was it the Tumblr? Yeah. That's what he calls the Batmobile. Yeah, it it made sense, you know, because, like, they would have had the plans there. Yep. He was there looking, so, yeah, that made sense. But, like, what guy flushed the Batmobile plans down the the toilet? Well, maybe he didn't flush them, because he did have access to the Hall of Records. So maybe Keaton Batman (laughs) is one of two things. He's either, A, way too naive and trusting, which I'm leaning more towards, or, B, he just doesn't give a shit. (laughs) No, he definitely just wanted the patents, so he he patented everything about the Batmobile. Or it's all available. Or option three, (laughs) again, Alfred sabotaging everything. Done. That's what it was. (laughs) If he's not trying to get him into toxic relationships, he's trying to just expose Batman. Alfred's just like yeah, just like copying files, sending them to the Penguin. The other car. <laughs> Getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> like, he, yeah, he sent him an email with the attachment saying, the other car. <laughs> so we've talked about Penguin. We talked about Catwoman, Batman, uh, Alfred, <laughs> which I could talk about Alfred all day, honestly. But, uh, oh, Commissioner Gordon, he's here for a while. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Commissioner Gordon's in this one. <laughs> he has like one and a half lines and he delivers them with all of the enthusiasm of someone whose family's being held for ransom thank you for saving the city batman no i, I don't think they had his because if they had his family he would be more convincing you know ah yeah i guess um, so. i feel like they might have had like some sort of electroshock on his nuts <laughs> you you act like you care old man or else <laughs> Okay, there, he does have a good moment uh, when, what's her name, the Ice Queen gets kidnapped. And yes. they frame Batman with a Batarang that the poodle snatched from him. <laughs> oh my god, it right. sounds so stupid when I say it out loud. <laughs> but <laughs> when, the, when he's on TV, it's like, this was found in her tent covered in blood. Like, he genuinely sounds disappointed. That Batman, uh, or like this. he's, or skeptical. You know, he's like, "There's no way that Batman say it ain't so." Batman, <laughs> can we talk about that Batarang for half a second? Oh, sure. It's like a drone, the <laughs> physics-defying Batarang. Hey, that that thing's right at home with uh, drone Batwing that Alfred takes over the controls for. <sighs> <laughs> Although it's very uh, primitive tech. Like all he has to do is he has like that LED screen on it, and he just mm-hmm. punches in four stick figure people, <laughs> and it knows automatically what to do. Yeah, man, it knows like because like, what what if a, a, a kid was walking by at the time? <laughs> a family of four, it's just yeah, and the battery just goes and like waylays them all. <laughs> oh God, not Batman's another like, orphan! Oh. <laughs> what have I done? Sorry about that. And again, I'm going to tie it back to my man, Alfred. He programmed it to do that. <laughs> yes. He'll live Alfred out there trying to sabotage every little thing. 
You either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. And I'll make sure of it, Master Bruce. Doesn't live that long. You won't live that long unless it's in marital bliss. <laughs> you should call up Miss Vale, sir. <laughs> I've brought another woman down to the bat cave, sir. <laughs> Alfred, I can only Alfred, kill so many stop people. Doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Batman's a killer. Because uh, what else does he do? Just like drop somebody off a building or something like that? He no, he attaches that bomb to that dude and then <laughs> kicks him down a well. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. He... <laughs> what was that bomb from originally? Was it they just had they, they were planting explosives or something, right? And he just picks it up and diffused it. And if well, apparently diffused it for a while, but then that big strong man is like in his way and keeps punching him, and the guy's like, ha, 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 ha. and then Batman just looks down at his belt and he's got the thing there all reset. And then Batman gives like the <laughs> mass murderer smile of the Joker and then throws him down a yeah. sewer grate or something. Yeah, throws him down a yeah, or something. <laughs> but, but that him. dude is definitely dead. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, whatever. Batman in the movies sometimes has no moral compunctions about killing. <laughs> At all. Like, I, and I just, it, it, it surprises me because I'm always like, oh my god, Batman killed that guy. But, but he's been straight up doing that the whole time. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him this. At least he's way more creative <laughs> this time around about how he kills people. <laughs> right. In the original, he's not just machine gunning the streets. Yeah, he's not just machine gunning them or chucking them down bell towers. Like at least here, there's some variety in the kills. Sets a dude on fire. <laughs> I mean, you could argue oh, that dude goodness. put himself out. There's snow everywhere, so well, he he might have put himself out, but he definitely suffered third degree burns. Yeah, I'm sure that one clown that he hit with the grap the grapple hook. There's no way his skull is intact. Oh no! No, he's the only one who might have lived. Yeah, yeah. he might have lived. Like he could have got knocked out. Somebody might have found him. He might have lived, but he's probably a paraplegic or something. Because yeah, no, he's definitely got some brain damage. Yeah, because he took a solid chunk out of that bank wall. How much force would you need to do that? I mean, Batman's strength it it goes from being extremely ineffective to the point that he can't take on either the penguin or Catwoman one on one <laughs> to the point where he'll be taking full on like i said punches from an 8 foot tall dude and shrug them off and like again yanking concrete essentially out of a wall yeah <laughs> that scene where he's fighting catwoman on the roof and she's like oh you hit me and he's like i'm sorry i'm oh, oh my god <laughs> i don't know. No, don't hit me like, he already tweeted out his freaking apology. <laughs> it was a good flick. reeling at the fact that, that the greatest detective fell for that. I mean, great, you know, greatest detective comes with a certain amount of being chivalrous. It's, Does certain, it? it's not that far outside of Batman's character to some extent. In more modern stories, oh yeah, Batman doesn't care. Like... <laughs> but, you know, back around the time this came out, he still had a certain amount of like, I don't, sorry, I didn't mean to hit you that hard. Yeah, no, but it's like, you know, if it's a if it's a woman who like an innocent bystander who accidentally catches the fist, I, I understand like why Batman would stop what he's doing. But like if you are engaging me as a combatant, <laughs> then I'm I'm not slowing down like you're going to get knocked out. <laughs> Let's put it this way. He he saved Martha recently, so all's <laughs> forgiven. I don't know. I don't know where I was going to go with that. I'm just like, tie it into Batfleck. You just had to, had to get it in one time. I just had to get it in. Well, I've been getting it in several times with regards to my <laughs> DCEU yeah. digs. Uh, well, we hadn't mentioned Martha. What if Penguin's mom had the same name <laughs> as... Batman's mom. Oh, dude. We didn't get. Oh, dude. We didn't hear what uh, his mom's name was. I don't think we even heard what Paul Rubens' name was officially. There's like a seventy-three percent chance her his mom's <laughs> name is Martha. 
Or the ultimate twist, his dad's name is Thomas. Let's go with the dad's this time. Ooh. What the hell? Oh, and, there it is. And while we're at... Mike, or no, you are a saucy fellow. Or, or to connect him more to Shrek, that Paul Rubin's name is actually Chip. Much like the son of Max Shrek. Who... <laughs> <laughs> That guy exists just to be walking 2.0. <laughs> Dad, run. Time to go meet the huddled masses or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Where do they find that guy? I can't remember. Um, here, let me do some research. With I think he's actually or he, he's like a horror guy originally, I think. Like he hmm. plays like horror villains or something. I can't recall. So oh, yeah, so they like throw a mask on him and give him a machete. Yeah, like he could be one of the Jasons, maybe, or a leather that face. That dude was oh, large. Oh, you know what? He might be Leatherface. He might Okay. He might be an iteration of Leatherface. I can't recall. It should I just, believe it. It should just been Robert England as Chip. <laughs> as Chip. <laughs> Dad, time to go down and see the masses. <laughs> Oh my goodness! No, don't. No, take... That guy had a jaw <laughs> that could punch out Superman. It, well, jeez, if you were looking for a Burton esque Superman, why well, go with Nicolas Cage? That dude, right there, <laughs> for real, square jaw and everything. Yeah, he was like he was built. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm inclined to think he was one of the big horror movie baddies, the nameless, yeah, like... faceless ones. When this, you know, the scene comes where the, where the, all the circus freaks come up and, and they're trying to kidnap Christopher Walken, this dude could have beaten all of them to within an inch of their lives. <laughs> yeah. But he, he's easily taken aback by a four-foot-something <laughs> dwarf in a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> in the dark. I don't even know. Oh, some trivia I'm sure many people have talked about. So Sean Young... Uh, yes. <laughs> Sean Young was originally Vicky Vale, or was cast as Vicky Vale in the first Batman movie. But when she was taking horseback riding lessons for the role, which makes total sense because all those scenes involving horseback riding lessons. Yeah. There's that, that time. I'm guessing that's probably why they cut those scenes because she broke her arm or something during the lesson. So they're probably like, hey, let's not kill the next actress. Let's just cut the horseback riding. <laughs> We got peed on our asses already. <laughs> I Burton at that point's like, listen, I have a plan to hook penguins up to rocket launchers in the sequel. Let's not burn our bridges with the animal people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like it's already bad enough. But so Sean Young was originally supposed to be Vicky, unfortunately or fortunately, lost the role to Kim after she was injured. And then apparently campaigned hardcore to be Catwoman in the sequel. You want to take it from here? She went to like three different uh, talk shows in a, a full leather cat outfit mm -hmm. and and was like trying so hard to get, <laughs> to get in this movie. Like she tried to corner Tim Burton dressed up as Catwoman and be like, I got the part. I mean, it's like, yeah, lady, you could definitely do crazy. I knew about that story even way back when because they did an Animaniacs uh, segment or something on it like so oh no 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 it was uh what was it tiny tunes or something the daffy duck yeah, kid kidding. plucky duck that's who oh, it was. plucky yeah he used to do like batman parodies with the porky pig kid playing robin yeah and then they wanted to turn bat duck into the next big blockbuster so they tried to hunt down tim burton who was at a club and then He's being delivered a cake, and then this crazy lady pops out of a cake in the cat outfit, being like, I'm a perfect cat woman, Tim, or whatever. I'm like, that's a Sean Young joke. I'm nine years old. Why do I know that? <laughs> you know, I I did not get half of those jokes that, that were in Animaniacs or, or, or uh, Tiny Toons. It was very and, insider industry for what it was. Oh, oh yeah, but no, that's what I love. Yeah, I just think they're so well done. Like, there's just like so much there to unpack. Fingerprints? I don't think so. <laughs> I still love that joke. Sorry. Who else? Oh, Robin. There was gonna be a Robin. There was gonna be Robin in this one. Yeah. Did you didn't know that? No, I did not. Oh, 
So brace yourself. <laughs> there was going to be a Robin in the first Batman, but Tim wrote him out because he was like, there's too much already going on, which made sense. Having a yeah. Robin in that movie at that point would have been a little much. Batman Returns, he was planning to introduce Robin, not quite as what we would get with 40-something Chris O'Donnell. Um, <laughs> it would be, Robin would be his actual name. So thanks, Nolan. You weren't the first one to think of that. He was going to be like a kid working in a in a garage, like a mechanic. And he was going to be like Batman's tech support. And he was going to be played... You sure you haven't heard who was going to play him? No, I, I don't know this. He was going to be played, to my recollection, by Marlon Wayans. Oh, I have heard this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been so good. I'm, yeah. I'm real sad that that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm really sad that it didn't happen with his character from Scary Movie. <laughs> this is some oh good shit, goodness. Batman. <laughs> yeah, Batman, we call this shit Two Face. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Where's Billy D? <laughs> no Billy D to be oh, found. Man. I feel like out of everything that could have and should have been with the second Batman, that was the missed opportunity. Out of everything, was it's the second Batman. You have a character set up to become Two Face. Come on, right? No, that works. That and, works on a bunch of levels. And Billy D is like, <laughs> I, I still think he would have been great. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that uh, given the opportunity, Billy D could have, you know, I mean, especially in Mies, he would have done just fine. Because right. it's not like this is the height of uh, you know drama and and then good writing. <laughs> That's what I feel we have yet to see. Suave, sophisticated Two Face. Like I could see that. Yeah, like Aaron Eckhart, Harvey Dent. Yeah, but that's Harvey Dent. That's him normal. Like imagine Billy D playing up the Two Face role, but still trying to play it like we are kind of frustrated right now. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta pour ourselves a drink of some nice yeah, good. Colt Forty Five. Yeah. Never, never fails. Never fails. Sugar, spice. Where you at, girls? <laughs> no, I would, I would have dug Billy D. They don't really do the Playboy Harvey Dent, you know. No. You never see the the super cool like uh, match for Bruce Wayne Harvey Dent. Well, you know that's what all the kids back in the day were wanting to see: spoiled rich kids playing up the nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was the 80s, so... <laughs> yeah. So after all is said and done, Max, with the convoluted mayoral plot, uh, Catwoman playing up her craziness, a Batman who doesn't care, a villain in Christopher Walken who's far more interesting than everybody else, and um, <laughs> penguins with rocket launchers, would you still recommend Batman Returns? I mean, you, you can't leave it out. Yeah, I don't know about recommend, but but I'm like, yeah, you have to watch this because it it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's important. <laughs> well, and also, it's an indicator for what was to come, in a way, because then the studio got really scared after the fact. They're like, this is this is terrifying. <laughs> this is dark. This is this really is real dark. dark. Let's give it to that guy who wrote the Wiz. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, an interesting thing is, I always credited Batman Forever with being the beginning of the end, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really was not. No. It brought it back, if anything, for a while. Because, Well, think about it. it it's kind of like the Star Trek uh, equivalency where some people like to say, like, the odd-numbered Star Trek movies are kind of the weird ugly ducklings of the series mm -hmm. and it's always the even number ones people always remember fondly batman the first the 89 one is remembered pretty fondly if not it's a little cheesy by today's standards but it still works yes batman returns is one of the biggest examples of style over substance i think with regards to creative control yeah 
<laughs> Batman <laughs> For Forever. Sure. Batman Forever. The studio came back in and was like, listen, have a vision, but still make us money. <laughs> <laughs> and they did, did Batman Returns not make money? I I think it didn't do as well as they wanted. Like it was, st- I think it was still a big hit, but it didn't necessarily have the returns that the studio was hoping for. After yeah, it didn't 89. do Batman money, and it certainly didn't spawn another Batmania because a lot of the commercial tie-in stuff really didn't gel with the dark aesthetic of the movie. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do remember those penguin toys, though. I, did, I remember I, having rocket launching penguins. Yep, I have them, too. I mean, no, well, the action figures and stuff like that, that makes sense. Because that, that stuff's been around for all sorts of things. But, like, mm-hmm. when they want to branch out a little bit more, like, Catwoman Barbie, maybe, or <laughs> the Happy Meal <laughs> toy. Well, you've heard the Fat Man on Batman commentary. He's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> there was a Happy Meal tied to this. <laughs> and yeah, when you I have oh. some of those toys still. And when you look at them, you're kinda like, This is a toy that's connected to a story about infanticide. Okay. <laughs> Forever I think brought balance momentarily back to the franchise where it's like it's a little bit lighter, it's got a little bit more action to it, not taking itself as seriously, but it's still kind of serious. Right. And then they went the opposite route of Burton and saying like listen we need to make a shit ton of toys out of this just go crazy Joel <laughs> nipples away sure yep <laughs> let me get some nipples on them bat suits so uh, you- yes no you have to watch Batman Returns uh, just because it's so ridiculous that you, know, you don't watch it because it's a good movie you just watch it because it's a beautiful train wreck There, there is some stuff to appreciate like you can appreciate when you're older, like you can see actors for the most part having a ball playing up their campiness, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I enjoy that. Like Keaton definitely isn't doing anyone any favors in this one because he seems really bored at times. But yeah, he doesn't have a lot to do. Yeah, but He's at least like the villains is are completely uninterested in the character. Yeah, at least the villains are interesting and some of the background characters. And like I said, uh, it's interesting designs, interesting imagery. It's just a lot of it. It's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of Burton. Yeah, yeah they, they really just uh, let him loose on this one, and and this is also the the height of Burtonism, isn't it? I suppose, like good Burtonism. Like, well, yeah, because like Edward Scissorhands is around yeah. this time, wasn't it? Yeah, he was more. Let's say he was more consistent with being able to balance style and storytelling around this time Mm -hmm. with I think this movie being the outlier at this period in his filmography because he did stuff after this like Ed Wood which is really great Um, Mm -hmm. and then years later Big Fish which uh, arguably is my favorite Burton movie and it was before he did his whole Disney deal where everything's Johnny Depp green screened up the wazoo so (laughs) because Johnny Depp's a marketable name in this day and age right <laughs> yeah I can who doesn't love johnny depp anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I i would recommend batman returns it it kind of it depends on my mood like there are days where i'll watch it for the performances and i'll genuinely invest in certain characterizations but then there'll be days where i'm like I, I need to see something dumb. Right. And Penguin so. driving around in a miniature Batmobile in his van is kind of hilarious <laughs> to me. Yeah, I like that the, the, the video game Batmobile is in the, the, the mayor mobile. <laughs> the mayor mobile. And they mobile. just parked that outside <laughs> City Hall. <laughs> and everyone just sees it like rocking back and forth. And, and they're like, dang. No, not even that. Penguin they're... is getting down in there. <laughs> It's those. It's the twenty dum dums that live in the city. They're just like, wonder what's going on. I was like, oh, something new. Oh, what happened to that dude running for mayor? What? I don't know why they sound like <laughs> Hicks. Hicks. All of a sudden, <laughs> Bat- Batman went from Gotham City to living in the sticks somewhere. Yeah, he went from Gotham City to Lexington City. <laughs> Paul 
apologies to any Lexington City listeners out there. <laughs> All I, I, point five of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's been kind of a fun, random, tangent-filled ride being able to talk to Max about Batman Returns. And thank you for the opportunity, it, Max. This is what happens when we spend so much time apart, Mike. We, I know. We can't, we can't get on the same track here. It's all just a haphazard. <laughs> but we have to mention this. We have to mention that. But that's kind of the fun of it, too. It, like, there are times we can have really structured conversation outlined to a T. But then some days it's just fun to harp on a pretty so bad it's good movie. <laughs> Truth. But uh, you can check out more well thought out think pieces over at three geeks dot ninja <laughs> whether that's yeah yeah that's or they, they put some sentences together pretty well over there <laughs> or if you want more of this type of shtick just listen to the itunes <laughs> podcast on three geeks <laughs> <laughs> yes and happy but holidays we, to you oh yeah happy indeed this is a christmas episode isn't it yeah merry christmas happy hanukkah <laughs> quasi kwanzaa Whatever you celebrate. Uh, indeed. Happy holidays to all of you. And you can catch us, same chat time, same chat channel, Mike McGee TV.